Greetings everyone. Today I want to give you a quick primer on strategy. For this lesson, let's just think of strategy in a general non-business sense. And that should be pretty easy to do because strategies have existed long before we ever had corporate organizations. So to get us started, take a minute to consider what is strategy? What does strategy mean to you? Strategy has a number of acceptable definitions. Some refer to strategy as a high-level plan to achieve objectives under uncertain conditions. Some say it's a comprehensive way to pursue goals. Others define strategy as a game plan for how goals will be achieved through the use of resources. Another view is that strategy is a plan of action or a policy designed to achieve a major overall aim. Regardless of which definition you prefer, look at how similar the major components of strategy are. Most conceptualizations of strategy include some type of thoughtful planning that's designed to achieve a goal through the use of resources and actions. At its very essence, strategy comes down to doing three things, setting goals, identifying needed actions, and utilizing resources. Any strategy starts by clearly articulating some type of objective. That goal needs to be clearly defined and understood so that appropriate action steps can be identified. Without a clear goal in mind, plans of actions will lack focus. People won't know what to do or may act in a way that's inconsistent that does not help an organization achieve its overall goal. However, when a goal is clear, everyone can rally around that idea and begin to identify the best course of action to reach a shared strategic objective. Once the overall goal and actions needed to achieve that goal are clear, then the resource allocation component of strategy takes place. In any organization, resources are limited. We never have enough time, money, or other resources to accomplish everything that we would like to do. Strategy helps us focus our limited resources on the most important tasks at hand. Let's talk about some non-business examples of strategy. Although there are a number of contexts where strategies are used and developed, two of the most common come from the military and sports. Military strategies have existed for thousands of years, but let's talk about a few of the more recent military strategies used by the United States. First, let's start with air supremacy. This strategy is focused on complete control of the skies, where an opposition force is incapable of effectively interfering with air warfare operations. Opposition fighters and anti-aircraft weapons are eliminated or reduced to the point of being ineffective. When air supremacy is achieved, it enables increased bombing efforts, tactical support of ground forces, unimpeded logistics support, and rapid deployment of military assets. In conventional warfare, controlling the skies also allows forces to control most land and sea operations. A related modern US military strategy is strategic bombing. This military strategy has the goal of defeating an enemy by destroying its economic ability to produce and transport the resources necessary to sustain combat operations. Therefore, Bombers are used to take out targets like factories, bridges, power grids, and other types of basic infrastructure. By destroying these kinds of targets, this strategy also destroys an enemy's morale and will to fight. Strategic bombing can demoralize an enemy. As these examples show, military strategies share the common characteristics of any strategy. They set goals, identify action plans, and utilize resource allocation. Our second non-business example of strategy comes from sports. Athletic teams also develop and implement strategies to achieve their goals of winning. In football, three yards in a cloud of dust was a popular strategy a few decades ago. Offenses were designed to run the ball for long extended drives, take time off the clock, minimize turnovers, and keep the other team's offense off the field. The logic was pretty simple. The other team can't score if they don't have the ball. The three yards and a cloud of dust strategy favored teams who had the biggest and strongest players. But to counteract this strategy, teams that did not have a lot of big, strong athletes developed a new strategy. Spread offenses were used to create more space on the field 
and allow smaller, quicker players to make plays outside the tackle box. This strategy takes advantage of bigger, stronger, but often slower players. The idea is to play fast and play in space, to tire out bigger players, and use speed or quickness advantages to score more points. As these two examples demonstrate, strategies often evolve over time in response to advantages or disadvantages relative to the competition. So why do we need strategy? Let's explore this question. Strategy is very important because resources are limited. As I mentioned earlier, we never have enough time, money, or people to accomplish all of our goals. The things required to achieve our goals are usually finite. It's just a reality for the majority of individuals and organizations. And because we never have enough resources to do everything that we would like to do, trade-off decisions have to be made. And when faced with tough decisions, we want to be as efficient and effective as possible. While strategy helps decision makers distribute limited resources more efficiently and effectively, strategy provides a framework for assessing the costs and benefits associated with resource allocation decisions. Let's go back to one of our military examples. For national defense, our armed services all want the best equipment, the best training, the best troops, and the best supplies. Every area of the military has needs and wish lists that are quite expensive. Unfortunately, our national budget cannot fund all these requests. Funding, quite simply, is finite. Therefore, when the Army wants more tanks, artillery, and helicopters, and the Navy wants more boats and submarines and aircraft carriers, and the Air Force wants more next-generation fighters, how does the Department of Defense decide at which of these options to invest? A compelling case can be made for any one of these requests. How do you decide? Well, if we have a strategy of air supremacy, and we truly believe that whoever controls the skies can also control battles on the ground and at sea, then the trade-off allocation decision becomes simpler. Our strategy would suggest that we invest our limited resources first into advanced fighters and or aircraft carriers that can establish air supremacy. Why? Because air power can take out tanks, artillery, boats, and submarines. And these investment decisions would be consistent with our strategy. When successfully formulated and implemented, strategy has a number of potential benefits. Beyond simply achieving our goals, organizations benefit from strategy because it gives people a clear purpose and direction for action. Strategy removes ambiguity and provides everyone with direction. Strategy addresses the questions of, what should I be focused on right now, or what should I be doing? With this type of strategic guidance, organizations can proactively shape their futures because their action plans are coordinated, consistent, and goal-oriented. I hope this general strategy primer was helpful and gets you thinking in more strategic ways.